Well, it shouldn't be like that. But indeed, uh, in the battle for our attention, for our funding, for our political interest, some crises win, some crises lose. And what we're seeing is that thereby the world is not living by the humanitarian principles. A, a child that is fleeing for her life in Africa should be as much worth as the sister that is fleeing for her life in Europe or the Middle East or elsewhere. And for the first time, the, the top 10 most neglected crises are all in Africa, all of them, with the DRC, Burkina Faso, Cameroon, they top the list. So what does that say about the world we're living in? Well, I think we honestly have to recognize there is discrimination. There is less. I mean, it, it, Africa is down prioritized compared to other parts of the world. And it is systemic, really. Some of the largest displacement crises, wars, conflicts in the world are in Africa. So how come there is so little funding, there is so little interest, there is so little coverage, there is so little political investment in solving these crises. That's what we're revealing in this report, where we have documented, really, the neglect uh, systematically across 40 displacement crises across the world. Now, your report looks at three crucial measures, the political will, media attention, and then lack of funding for, for the needy. Which is the most important? Well, they are equally important and they are interconnected. Because there is little media attention, there is little funding from donors, thereby also l l less international presence, which may lead to less diplomats, less security council uh, resolution, less political efforts. So it's a vicious cycle, really. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you are now covering uh, this. Uh, the, 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 the world media should be more interested in the Democratic Republic of Congo, which is a dramatic war, a dramatic crisis. 27 million people need humanitarian assistance, but it's not even getting the, the attention that Ukraine is getting in a day. They are not getting even in a year. You've talked many times before about how politics is poisoning humanitarian efforts. Um, and the global response to the global refugee crisis. What, what, what do you mean? Well, the, it, it is politicized in the sense that it is militarized. I mean, humanitarian work should be neutral, impartial, driven by humanity. And we need to be independent of political and other actors. Many political actors, militaries, etc., try to instrumentalize us. They want us to work on one side and not on the other. They want us to steer our funding. Uh, at times, there is counterterrorism legislation or sanctions legislation that is also making it difficult for us to reach some of the uh, displaced people, some of the civilians in different contexts. Humanitarian relief should be given according to needs alone. We're, we're not asking a widow with five children whether her dead husband belonged to this or that armed group. We're asking her, do your children have food? And if the answer is, uh, is no, then we provide food. One of the huge obstacles the humanitarian sector is facing is funding. I mean, much of Europe and the rest of the world, they're, they're in the throes of a cost of living crisis. Prices for, for fuel, for food, for, for basics, they're, they're soaring. And many people are saying, well, yeah, we'd like to help everyone else, but we need to start uh, here, home first. Well, and I disagree with that, really. I mean, the, you, you look at the trends in economic growth in private and public spending, and you see that now Europe is not 10 or 20 times richer than these poorest places. We're one to 200 times uh, richer. So, of course, we should be able to at least spend 0.7 percent of our riches on foreign assistance. So should all of the other countries that have find money for, for satellites and Olympics and whatnot should be able to fund basic humanitarian life-saving relief in the places where people live on, on less than a dollar a day. So how much does it really cost to help these people 
in need. Can you put it into context? You mentioned that 0.7%, but and the Olympics and, and other kinds of spending. Put it in a way that we can understand how much is really needed. Well, m many of these uh, neglected crises would have a total humanitarian spending need for all of us humanitarian organizations for one or two billion dollars. It's the same that is spent, was spent in, in minutes uh, when, when the rich countries were, were doing their COVID relief packages for home. It is, it is what is spent on, 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 on a, fr a fraction of a, of a military fighter jet. The, 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 in, in the DR Congo, we found out that there is one dollar per needy person per week now. Okay, okay, people cannot survive on that. We, we cannot provide relief on the basis of that. And that's why I was selected, selecting between which children starving should get aid and which sh starving children should get nothing. That's a horrible decision to, to have to make day in, day out. Um, how do you, though, make sure that when you get that funding, it's going to the right place? I, I think there is few other kinds of public or private spending that is as carefully evaluated, monitored, followed up as humanitarian spending, where we're, we're endlessly uh, revised by external and internal aud auditors. Uh, and it is amazing how little is lost and how efficient we are in reaching people in need. You talk about efficiency, but a lot of Western governments will claim that they are overwhelmed um, with refugees. Uh, how are you going to change that conversation? Well, they're not overwhelmed by refugees, except the neighboring countries to Ukraine at this moment. And it is interesting to see that a country like Poland alone has taken and is hosting more than three million Ukrainian refugees. By the way, the same country said they couldn't take even, even a handful of thousands during the 2015 refugee crisis or, or any Afghans or, 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 or Syrians. So if there is a will, there is a way. One out of 10 uh, refugees come to rich countries. Nine out of 10 people who flee stay in or go to a poor country. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a myth that we are overwhelmed by refugees in the, in the rich world. In your role, you've traveled all around the world to, to conflict zones and, and, and met people fleeing, met people who've been displaced, many of them children. And you've talked to them, haven't you, about what they want to be when they grow up? Indeed. Uh, and I, I always ask when I come into a classroom, uh, what, what, hey, children, what would be your dream? What would you want to be when you're as old as I am? And the answer is nearly always, we want to be nurses, we want to be doctors, we want to be engineers, we want to be farmers, we want to be uh, football players, uh, stewardesses. I mean, the, none of them say, I, I want to be a terrorist, I want to be a fighter, I want to be uh, tearing down anything. They have the same dreams as our children have. The difference is that they were not allowing them to realize their dreams. And so that's what I beg for, more funding so that we can realize more dreams. We have more than a million children in school through the Norwegian Refugee Council. We could easily double, triple, quadruple that if we had enough funding. Now, you've been a humanitarian worker for, for 40 plus years. Uh, looking around the, the world, have, have things got better or is it really a case of things just really getting worse? Well, it's, it's a mixed picture, really. Uh, humanitarian aid and assistance has become infinitely more effective and efficient. We are helping and saving lives now in places where we, where we could never, uh, never go, nor be able to be effective uh, earlier. However, we are overwhelmed and overstretched at the moment. The gap between assessed needs for, for, for more than 100 million people in great need and the funding available is widening. So we have less now of funding per person who, are, who would be fleeing than we had before. And in that respect, 
it is more difficult now, um, but we were not giving up. We're begging that we again reboot and do what is needed to help the most vulnerable on this planet. Where do you think there's the most potential for hope? Well, the, the, the great potential for hope is really for us to provide livelihoods for the big, young generation growing up in disaster and conflict-stricken regions, including in, in Africa, who have all of these dreams to build, become engineers and doctors and whatnot. Um, that's, that's a great hope. And with the record number of billionaires from Shanghai to Houston, Texas, I mean, the, the, it shouldn't be difficult to realize these dreams. We can do it if we want. There are more countries who could also provide. We have now a growing uh, world economy may contract now very temporarily, but the long trend is that the global economy is booming. So I, I'm, I'm asking for Asian economies and so on to join us and, and do like we have now in Scandinavia. Since we were a middle income country, spent more than 0.7% of our riches to foreign assistance, the average industrialized country uh, would be investing less than 0.2%. I mean, they, they, they keep 99.1% to themselves. I don't think that is fair, really. And your message on World Refugee Day, what's your message to the international community? That you and I could be a refugee one day, and therefore it's important to help those unfortunate that had to flee because armed violence came to their place they had to flee because it was unlivable where they are. It could be us. It could be us fleeing with our, 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 our mothers or our, our, our children. Uh, therefore, identify with them, uh, help them help themselves. They have great potential. Einstein was a refugee, as we should remember. The, the, they are people who want just to have, have help in the, our greatest need so that they can help themselves. Yeah, and England, absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you.